the purpose of the lesson very briefly was just to look at scriptures and understand what the Bible teaches about being a servant. Our model is not to try to define servanthood from um, man's perspective or from a fragmented or distorted picture from the church, but to look at the picture of servanthood that we see with Jesus. We believe and we've been establishing that disciples have to follow the word of God in order to see Jesus. And when we look at scripture, scripture is prolific in the statements about what servants ought to be. From this lesson, we grab three primary points uh, that help us to understand what servants are all about. We titled it, Be a Servant, but we don't want to be any kind of servant. We want to be true servants. And true servants, number one, are ready to serve. Um, in order for me to be ready to serve, I have to know why I ought to be. I'm ready to serve because I was saved to serve. God redeemed me. He cleaned me up. He saved me to serve him. He graced me to do good. He made me so that I can minister to others. But in order for me to do that like he wants me to, I have to be available. Availability is the key in being ready to serve. Peter, uh, Paul rather, uses a text in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 4 where he describes a soldier who's ready to serve. He's not entangled with the affairs of life, and that helps with availability. You have to ask the question, what things are entangling you that are preventing you from being available for God? But not only are servants available, they're adaptable. We're willing to deal with whatever we need to deal with like we need to deal with it. We have to adapt to situations and overcome for the sake of God. Be ready to change when necessary. I might need to change how I deal with people, places. might need to change how I encounter a culture. But be adaptable and serve for God. That helps you to be ready. But not only are we available and adaptable, but we're also amenable. We have the right attitudes. God wants us to represent him in a way where whenever we serve, we do so in the character and the likeness of Christ. It would be false advertisement to do good things in an ugly way or to be involved in doing things for the kingdom of God and not doing it like the Christ himself. So if we're going to be true servants, then true servants have to be ready to serve. But number two, True servants uh, see and recognize needs. They see and recognize needs in that they know God put them here to make a difference. So number one underneath that, we see the lack that needs to be met. That's really the ministry model in a, in a, in a nutshell. Ministry comes out of a need. So don't walk past needs. Don't move past needs. In fact, do what the Bible teaches and be ready to make a difference whenever a need presents itself. Why wait for tomorrow with what you can do on today? So we understand that God put us here to serve, and then we understand that we've got to look for those needs. But number two, remember underneath that, that the Lord's opportunity to use you are caught in you being able to see needs and make them and serve accordingly. God uses us. He uses you. He uses me in every opportunity to serve. I shared with you this morning that everything you do is a test. You have to determine whether or not you're going to pass the test. Passing the test means that I meet the opportunity, I, I address it, and I deal with it like God gave it to me. In fact, if you're waiting for the occasion to be just right, if you're waiting for everything to line up, if you're waiting for the perfect opportunity to present, prevent it, present itself, you may stop yourself from allowing God to work. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse number 4 the Bible says if you wait until the wind and the weather are just right, you will never plant anything and never harvest anything. So don't wait until it's right. Just remember that if God put it in front of you, it's a test. Pass the test by making the need or meeting the need. Number three under that, you've got to remember that we have to see the limited time to take advantage of the occasion. We don't have a lot of time. We don't know uh, how long this opportunity will present itself, and you really don't even know how long you're going to be here. So since that's the case, make the most of what you have. Proverbs 3 and verse 28, never tell your neighbors to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. Make the most of what God gave you. Don't be like many disciples that we read about in Scripture who are filled with excuses for why they can't do something. No, make the most of what God has for you to do right now. Don't Create excuses to not do it because God is not pleased with excuse-prone disciples. 
Jesus says in Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, that if you come up with excuses for why you can't follow him, then you're not good and you're not profitable in following him. So true servants see and recognize needs by recognizing the lacks, recognizing that God gives them the opportunities to do so, and also knowing that there's a limited time to get it done. The third point we talked about was that true servants show righteousness in their spirit. My servanthood is not only connected to the fact that I'm meeting needs and that I'm addressing the hurts in a community or among my church, but I also do it with the character of Christ. I want my nature to represent the fact that I'm a servant. So what that means is, is that, number one, I'm faithful. When I'm called on to serve, I stay until the end. I do it, and I do the job right. I will finish what I've been called to do. We looked at Romans 12, verses 9 through 11. I challenge you to revisit that text. And in that text, you will remember that Paul says you've got to have zeal. You've got to have fervor. And you've got to have zeal and fervor because your service really is in serving God. But character point number two is that you need to be dependable. Not only are you faithful, and faithful sometimes is misunderstood as dependable, but you need to be dependable. The question you ought to answer is, can you be counted on? Are you the person that's always missing, but you should have been there? Are you the person that signed up for something, but you never really committed to get it done? Well, that shouldn't be the case if you're a servant. You ought to serve wholeheartedly, as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Ephesians 6 and verse number 7. Not only that, but dependable people don't get tired doing the right thing. They fight through. They know that what they're doing is for God. And they also know that in the end, they're going to receive their reward. So don't get tired of doing the right things. Galatians 6 and verse number 9, 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 13, they all remind us about not giving up on doing the right thing. Number three, though, not only are you faithful and dependable, but you have to be humble. Humility is a quality that marks the servant. Our character ought to be one where we are low which allows us to do the things that other people call low, that service. Humble people aren't interested in promotion. Humble people are simply interested in using what they have to get God glory, make a difference in the lives of people around them, and to make their commitment to the church prosperous. Not only are we to be faithful and dependable and humble, but be helpful. Be willing to do whatever needs to be done. First Peter 5 and verse number 2, that text that's really talking about pastors and shepherds and how they minister to people, there's a little statement there at the end that ought to grab your attention. Be eager to serve in whatever capacity you can. Be willing to do whatever needs to be done. Be willing to have the lowest job or the highest job. Be willing to be behind the scenes or in front. Be helpful. Servants are helpful. And then lastly, servants are truthful. When you are genuinely doing what you do for God, there are no hidden motives, no hidden agendas. You're not secretly doing what you're doing to gain the favor of another person. You're not secretly involved in what you're involved in so that leverage can work your way. No, if you are truthful, if you have integrity with your service, you do what you do because you are mirroring the very nature of the king. First Peter 4 and verse number 11, Peter describes all the things that we, we have as gifts, but in this passage he says if anyone serves they should do so with the strength of God my service to him my service to another my service to the church is for God's benefit and for God's glory everything I do is aimed at God being pleased so be a true servant have righteousness in your spirit be a true servant see and recognize needs be a true servant stay ready to serve at all times I want to conclude with the same prayer that we concluded with this morning out of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. And in that prayer, towards the end, in particular verse 21, the Hebrew writer writes, I pray that God will do in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ, and to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's let our challenge be and our prayer be that we look at our actual servanthood practices. Ask yourself some fundamental questions. Just going over the points again. Number one, are you really ready to serve? Have you made yourself available? 
Are you adaptable for God? Do you plan around God's work in your life? Or does your work trump God's work? Number two, look in Look inside yourself and ask the question, do you actually practice looking for ways to serve? Do you look at areas where people are hurting? Do you see the lack? Do you see God's opportunity to use you in that? Do you have a sense of urgency that says, if I don't serve, this opportunity to serve may pass me by? Practice that. Discuss how you can grow deeper in that. And then number three, ask yourself the question, how is my character, my servanthood character? How's my faithfulness? Do I finish what I start? How's my dependability? Can people count on me to be there when I say I'm going to be there, to be there as often as I say I'm going to be there and to get things done? Or am I always the missing link? Ask yourself the question, am I humbly doing what God called me to do? Or does my attitude rise up in my arrogance and my ego and my desire for my preference and my wants? trump God's ability to be powerful in my life? Or the question, am I helpful? Do I do whatever I'm asked to do, or does it have to fit neatly into the box that I design? And then lastly, are you truthful? Do you serve because you want God to get glory, or are you after this for yourself? Those are some questions we can ask as we celebrate, investigate, and imply the word of God even further in our life. Now, dig deeper. Watch what God will do when we practice being servants. God bless you.